For centuries from classical times, the Europeans believed that there must be a vast land mass in the southern hemisphere to balance the land mass in the north, otherwise the world would tip over. They referred to this supposed great land mass in the south as Terra Australis Incognita, the unknown south land. And so the European discovery of Australia is very much the pursuit of whether this land existed. In the Mitchell Library, we're fortunate to hold some of the great landmark documents of our history that chart the European discovery of Australia. And gradually over those 200 years, the map of Australia emerged through various explorations. We begin with the great voyage of Torres, in which he sailed through the Torres Strait, which was named after him. And we have the account of that of 1606 that Don Diego de Prado kept, and that's the earliest journal. This begins the, the charting of Australia. Then in 1642-43, Abel Tasman, the last of the great Dutch explorers, he charted the southern part of Tasmania, which he named Van Diemen's Land. It was still unknown, of course, whether Tasmania was linked to the mainland. In 1644, in a landmark voyage, Abel Tasman charted the entire north and northwest coast from the tip of Cape York right around to Northwest Cape. The Dutch were only interested in trade. They found no gold, no spices, no treasure, and so they dropped us like a hot potato and sailed away. Ironically, the various areas they charted in Western Australia were the areas where we now get our mineral wealth, but it was still a jigsaw puzzle. How does that all fit together? There was no interest in Australia as a result of that from the 1640s until James Cook in 1770 charted the east coast of Australia. And on board Cook's voyage was Joseph Banks. And he was instrumental in having Botany Bay chosen as the site for the convict colony. And his journal, which we hold, details that entire voyage. And it's the first extensive account of Australia and really the single most important document in the world for our history. It was still unknown whether the west coast, which had been charted by the Dutch throughout the 17th century, and the east coast were in fact the one landmass. The first fleet arrived in January 1788, and we have nine of the only 11 First Fleet journals, that is journals written on the First Fleet and covering the first months here. One of the convicts had actually drawn a map of Sydney Cove. A little bit of spin involved in it though, he showed it as flourishing a little more than it was. But there were still questions to be answered. In the late 1790s, Matthew Flinders with George Bass circumnavigated Tasmania. There was another piece in the jigsaw puzzle, which was the map of Australia solved, that Tasmania was actually an island. And then from 1801 to 1803, Flinders, without Bass this time, sailed right around the continent and proved that it was one landmass. The west coast and the east coast were part of one landmass. And so for the first time, we had the map of Australia, and it was Flinders who called it Australia. Flinders also gave us so many names that everyone knows. The Great Barrier Reef is Flinders, the Coral Sea is Flinders, the Great Australian Bight is Flinders, Cape Lewin is Flinders, Bass Strait is Flinders. And so the map of Australia is really saturated with names that Flinders bestowed, although unlike a lot of explorers, he named nothing after himself. There are a lot of Flinders on the map, but that has been named by people in Flinders' honour. So through these great documents we have at the Mitchell Library, we have 200 years, 1606 to 1803, during which the great puzzle of the Southland was solved through various explorations. And we can trace those in the Mitchell Library through these great landmark documents, which we're very fortunate to have. 100, a free exhibition at the State Library of New South Wales until June 16.